Hello everyone, it's Cherie with CDH Designs and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about prepping for a kitchen remodel. I've done some seminars on how to survive a kitchen or bath remodel and the bottom line is that it comes down to one thing and that is planning. October's Kitchen and Bath Design Month and I thought that I would just come to you guys with some tips for getting ready to meet with your designer or if you're a DIY person and you feel like you can do it yourself, just some ideas for how you can successfully accomplish that. I have been doing kitchens and baths for almost 15 full years and I love it. It has been challenging. Um, I've been doing design since 2005 so um, and then specializing in kitchens and baths for a little less than that but in the time that I've been doing design I've seen lots of trends come and go and one thing stands true and that is if you have planned your room with adequate time and attention to detail you will be a lot more satisfied with the end result I know it's a large investment to do a kitchen or bathroom and you need to make sure that you're giving it the thought that you would um, for a large purchase. I mean, I know sometimes we spontaneously go out and buy a vehicle and it's fun to do spontaneous things, but when you're planning a kitchen that should last you more than your vehicle, although it will cost you about the same, <laughs> um, you just need to give it the due diligence for your planning because there's a lot of mistakes that can be made. Even just one wrong measurement can really throw off the game. So first of all, you need to make sure that you have measurements of the room that are accurate. Like they say with cutting a board, measure twice, cut once. It's the same thing with your kitchen planning. When we do a kitchen, I typically have customer dimensions or I will go out and measure and then we plan the room and then we double check and we have the um, installer or the fabricator, the builder of the cabinets come out and double check too. So there's a lot of checking and double checking because it's so important that you get the dimensions and the measurements right for the room. Secondly, um, you wanna make sure that if there's any major structural changes to happen that you know what you can do and how you're going to go about doing them. You can't just rip down a wall like you see on TV most of the time. Um, not most of the time, but a good portion of the time you run into load bearing walls and an open concept floor plan just wasn't designed for every house. So you have to make sure you're aware of your limitations and let your designer know the opening sizes to your room because you may want one of those really large French door refrigerators, but the door into your room might only be 32 inches wide and it will never fit through there without taking everything apart. So you need to know those things and what kind of obstacles you're gonna run into because these are not big deals, but they are a bigger deal if you have to run into that issue halfway down the road instead of hitting it um, head on ahead of time. So knowing what you're getting into. And then the other thing is you need to know, um, your designer needs to know how you live and work in the kitchen. So if you are um, a working mother or a working woman and you never cook, <laughs> that's kind of important to know when you're remodeling your kitchen. It's probably more for aesthetic. However, you should always think about the function of the room. It may be your husband or significant other that does all the cooking and so they should definitely be involved in the planning or maybe even the primary um, person that is talking with your designer. Now that being said, when I'm working with a couple, I hear a lot of times one or the other says they're the decision maker and you should talk to them. That's all well and good, but if you live in the same house, you use the same space and both of you um, need to be involved in the planning. So I know it's some time and it's a little bit off of your normal um, schedule, I guess. It takes it takes some time and some energy to do this, but again, we want to do it right so you don't make mistakes. It's a costly investment. So get together and figure out if you're on the same page. Often you'll find that you're not on the same page and that's where a designer or a mediator can come into play. I often deal with couples who have differences in opinions as far as colors or styles or even the layout of the kitchen and that's why 3d design is so helpful because you can see it before it's done and again that way we're hitting I mean you may still run into issues in a design 
most remodels you do run into an issue. It's not like they see on TV, you see on TV and it's done for drama. Um, some of that is drama, but some of it's reality because you never, you really never know what you're getting into until you tear out walls and see what's behind there. You could run into mold issues. You could run into um, water, you know, that's been laying in there and destroying your floor, and you have to do a whole new subfloor, and you hadn't accounted for that extra couple thousand dollars. A lot of things you run into, but planning is so important. So get in there and investigate a little bit. Make sure you guys are on the same page for what you want. Write down these goals. Create some idea books. If you use Pinterest or Howl's, make sure you have a clear idea of what you want. If you're not sure of your style, there's lots of style quizzes out there. Um, just kind of gathering things that you like, pictures, whether it's in a magazine or online. Once you start to see a few ideas of what you want or what you like in um, articles or on the internet, it helps you come up with a clear goal of the way you want to go with your room. Keep in mind, styles come and go, but it's your home and you should always do what you love. I will put in an oak kitchen any day of the week if that is what you love and it fits the style of your house. If you live in an urban setting and you want to do a farmhouse kitchen, it just doesn't fit. So you have to be respectful of the style of the house too. Um, I'm actually going on an appointment this week to look at a Victorian home. And whether you like it or not, some homes just demand a certain style. And there's probably a reason you fell in love with the home. And so your kitchen needs to be respectful of the, t the period and the style of the house as well. Because otherwise, it feels like that you walk into a city loft and you see this farmhouse display and you're just like, why? I mean, we don't need to have an identity crisis in your, in your home. So those are some things to think about as you get started. And I just want to remind you guys, this is a fun process. Um, the before and after is so incredible when you see what things came from and sometimes in between the before and the after there's a roller coaster and it's ups and downs and disappointments and highs when you design the kitchen and you see what it looks like and you're super excited and then lows when you run into a snag or something costs more than you had anticipated so just be aware that you're going to have highs and lows but when you see that finished product looking back it's always worth it I hope that helped. You guys let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of or hear more about, and I'll do my best to give you a hand.